Hey guys, Bryce here. So today I kind of want to come to you and just talk about what are my favorite business books. Now, um, I'm super excited because I mean this this is a lot of years inside of the making. I, I've been reading for a very long time of a lot of business books. Some of them were you know um, inherited from from my parents. Some of them were you know I went out to Barnes and Nobles. I've gone online, read a lot of audio books, and I've amassed a pretty good amount of knowledge. So I want to kind of like share what are my favorite ones. Um, and just kind of like tell like what each one has kind of done for me So I'm not gonna go super super in depth with each one because there are a lot and also I'm not gonna go in terms of order of like which one is my absolute favorite because the ones that I've actually chose today um, They're all pretty much equal It's very hard for me to say like which one is my favorite specifically because I've used all of them in such great detail And the ones that I've done are like books that I've read like multiple times over so I really want to share that with you so the first book on my list is Rich Dad Poor Dad, okay? So one thing to note too with this video, I don't have the physical copies of every single one because I didn't really have a lot of time to prepare for this video. So I was just running around um, either different like bookshelves I have in my house or different spots maps to try and find them, but some of the books I could not find. <laughs> so for example, my uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, what I do have though, however, is a representation. This is like the cash flow, um, cash flow game that came um, a long time ago. I remember, when I was a lot younger, like really um, playing this playing this version of this game and like just trying to like learn the secrets of like the rich, different things like that. Like Robert Kiyosaki's on um, Rich Dad Poor Dad was a really great awakening kind of book for me. Cause up until that point, I, I had I would always like try like little things to make money. For example, like like when I was younger, I had like a lawn mowing company. I would like sell like um like cans of soda. Like I'd buy like cans of soda in like middle school, and then I would go and like actually um. People would be like, "Hey, can I get a dollar for the can?" So I'd sell like, you know, twelve dollars, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars um, for these little cans over the course of like, like the year. But I didn't know there was a thing called entrepreneurship. I figured that it was just like, you know, people just want to give me money, so I would just give them the stuff that they wanted, and I was able to always make money and always be able to save up a lot of cash. And it was just really kind of just this thing that just happened naturally for me. So when I started reading this book, it's like there was a secret kind of path that only a select few were able to kind of walk. And it was very, very intriguing to me. And I just got really fired up. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I think that this is something that I could really get into. It's something I could do. I like this. And it was a very interesting period because while I was kind of awakened, it actually led to me coming like, there was probably about a six month period to where I got very, very, very arrogant, right? It was right around the time when I was like finishing um, high school. And I was super disrespectful because like everyone that had a job, I was like, I know something you don't, right? And it wasn't that I was coming from a bad place. It was just something like, you can't tell me what to do because this book has told me every single thing in secret that I ever need to learn about the world and I can make money. And if you're not like a millionaire, like, you know, like don't tell me what to do because I, I know what I'm doing, right? So it lets this like deep kind of like, um, kind of like disrespect um, towards people who are a little bit ahead of me. And, you know, I, I do kind of look back in time and I, I really feel bad because like, like I had some conversations with my mom and stuff that were very very disrespectful and it's kind of funny because like sometimes what happens in our lifetime is even though we're not like a millionaire yet as far as like cash in the bank right you, you could be an asset millionaire um, I mean that most people are, by the time they retire are gonna have a million dollars worth of assets um, if they've done kind of the right things but in terms of like cash flow millionaire where your business is doing a million dollars a year or if you have at least a million dollars in cash in the bank right just because they don't have that today does not mean they're not going to do it. So for me to be kind of disrespecting them, that, that was very, very kind of a, a bad time looking back. You know, I do kind of look back with a little bit of embarrassment when I, when I think about that time. But it's still, Rich Dad Poor Dad got me into the game. It got me really thinking that, you know, this is something I could do. This is something that I could really make work. And I kind of like developed this thing. It was like, you know, I, I can't work for somebody else. I want to work for myself. I want to be my own boss. I want to be able to do that. Now... The next book that I like, and I don't have a physical copy, I've never actually had a physical copy of this next book, is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Now the reason I don't have a physical copy is because I, I always used to read it like the audio version on YouTube. So like there was, there was, I would always type in like how to win friends and influence people. I would just listen to the audiobook, right? Now that book was a little bit interesting, right? Because it taught me some social skills. But the thing about reading that audiobook version of it was it always took me to this like kind of higher level vibration where I was just so much more calm, relaxed, nice, and kind of giving. And every time I would read it, I'd always get like more opportunities kind of coming to me. Um, it was a very strange phenomenon. So anytime that I want to either get to the next level, I just kind of listen to it. And I'm not actually listening to the words and like trying to like read page, page, page. It's more like the feeling and the motions and kind of like the, just the atmosphere of 
high vibration and like networking and, and really um, kind of making friends, influencing people and becoming a person that can, you know, really find success in life. And that's why I like that book a lot. Um, I've, I've read that so many different times. Like I've read that anytime that I like wanted to like increase how much money I was making, anytime I had like a weird deal or I had like a networking event or I needed to like connect with a partner for, you know, for our accounting and bookkeeping business that I own, right? If I needed to connect with a specific partner, I would read that book to kind of see like what are some ways into it? How can I approach this person? How can I make this thing win-win? What are some different things I can do? How can I go and like use like influence networks around that person? And that's really what I got from um, how, to, how to win friends and influence people. The next book that I like, I actually do have a physical copy, and I have like a, I have like a stack of, uh, 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 <laughs> I, this might be the thumbnail, but I have a stack of books just like this, uh, sitting next to me. I didn't want to put it on like this uh, thing, I have like a little um, table here because I didn't want the books to, um, the, the camera to focus on the books and make the video fuzzy. So the next book that I like is Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. Now, I actually like all the secrets. So he has dot com secrets, expert secrets, he has traffic secrets. There's a fourth secrets that um, I, I have not read yet, but I, I think the fourth one's like the workbook. But I, I like those three books uh, specifically because I read this actually a number of years ago. And let me write down because I actually remember another book that I really like. But um, this book has, has been like the most influential as far as like as my coaching and mentoring business, right? So for the accounting business, some of more the, the traditional businesses I, or traditional books that I'm going to be talking about in a minute have helped me with that side. But as far as like really doing a mentorship slash coaching type of business or being more of like a, like a, a branding type of, of influence, like this, this book has been like the really, really impactful, right? Because it talks about like utilizing Facebook groups to go and build an audience. It talks about how to really tell your story in a way that gets people to really respect it. It talks about how to really become like a leader inside of a space. It talks about how to like build a coaching program it talks about like like there's so many different things inside of this book specifically about um really how to grow it talks about making a cause like a future-based cause for example like the reason why we're doing this channel specifically is because not not really to make to make a lot of money i mean i'm, I'm sure that like so i don't know i don't know if we're gonna ever make money right because i'm not sponsored by any of these authors i don't have any like brand deals or anything like that but it's a really good way for us to be able to like pass information to one another. Like for, for example, my, my, my mom, my brother, my dad, right? They, they all, we all basically work in the same business nowadays um, because like they got, my, my dad um, was really big inside of like real estate. So last year he sold a bunch of his properties for like $420,000 in like net profit, right? My, um, my brother, he's really been helping me inside like the mentoring and the, and the coaching business, doing a lot of like the back end stuff, like running my YouTube channel, managing my VA team, um, doing things like that. My mom, she actually was an accountant um, for a number of, of years inside of her career. So then she's really managed, actively managing my accounting firm. And she's coaching some of the students how to like our coaching business. Cause like we, we teach people how to like start an accounting or bookkeeping business. So like having her be able to kind of pick that up has been really, really instrumental, right? So by making this kind of channel where I can kind of download all the information that I've been learning, right? Cause like for me personally, I spent about 150, it's about 150, like 175,000 in terms of co courses, books, seminars, uh, mentorships, masterminds. So being able to share the information in a very like streamlined location so that they can actually absorb a lot of this information as well. It is really cool. And it's just as a, as a side benefit, you guys can kind of come along for the ride. Because I, I know for me, like I was kind of blessed that like my parents were not like rich when I was like young, but they were, you know, reading this stuff. They were thinking along the right lines. And that allowed me to be able to kind of um, avoid a lot of the mistakes that most people make, right? That's that's why you generally like need to get around mentors. You need to get around information, new information that's going to change your paradigms, change your mindset and put you on that right path. Because um, like one, one thing I've kind of learned um, a lot of the times when you're trying to become successful, it really comes down to those little daily habits that you're doing every single day that kind of move you towards this goal. It's, al it's almost like, imagine like someone who's trying to like lose weight, right? It's not that you just become someone who has a six pack. It's, you might start overweight, like my example, like two years ago, I got really, really lean, right? It was just kind of like, I started very overweight and very fluffy. 
And it was just, I had to start, you know, taking daily tracking metrics of like, okay, how much am I eating? How much am I weighing? How much am I drinking? How much am I working out? How much am I exercising? And over time, I just kept doing the same things over and over again. And those big, good habits started making incremental um, decreases to my weight. And over time, I got leaner and leaner and leaner. Well, it's been the same thing for, you know, my businesses, right? So for my accounting and bookkeeping business, as well as my coaching business, by just doing really simple, basic, easy to like implement like things, right? Like, like growing in my audience, like um, doing good work, like getting referrals over time just caused you to make more and more money. I think last year we did about $512,000 in sales total for uh, across both the businesses. Um, with a net profit like three hundred twelve thousand um, dollars, net profit that includes like paying you know different employees, different contractors and stuff, but it's it started because like all we're doing is every single day we're just focused on a couple of different things. It's just it's not necessarily exponential, right? Like I wish it could have been exponential, right? That'd be cool to be like you know I make a million dollars overnight in like two years, right? But you know for me that that wasn't quite my path, right? My path is still incremental growth, but it's consistent growth and it increases every single year right so that's kind of what, what i'm learning whenever i like read these different books and expert secrets is actually really really cool and instrumental to kind of see it because i actually read dot com secrets that's the other version like the red version of this book when i was first getting started in business but it was just kind of over my head because i just didn't understand any of the principles that were in there so i only read like a couple pages and i kind of like put it back on the shelf in barnes and nobles and just like walked on but as i've gotten older and more experienced in business now a lot of the principles actually make more sense so it's very cool to kind of do this channel as well because now i get to like go back in time and kind of say okay this is my spin on this book and say like oh so I thought it meant this, but nowadays I have more context into what business is actually like so I can break it down at a much higher frequency to make it so much easier for other people to kind of learn. And again, this channel is going to be a training method and a training methodology for the different members inside of my family, different people um, who are watching. And just I want to kind of see if we can grow this thing together and see if you know everyone who watches this channel can be successful. Um, I'm not saying that you're going to make a million dollars overnight by watching this channel. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying it's going to put you in the right direction, the right atmosphere to start getting more and more success in your career, your business, investing, whatever the case might be. Okay, because I'm going to have like my dad who does investing on this thing. I'm going to have me who's, who's really good in business. I'm going to have like my younger brother to give like a perspective. Maybe you're a little bit younger on and you're watching the channel and like kind of show all three different perspectives to see if like, you know, maybe you can learn some stuff and pick some stuff up along the way. Um, but that's expert secrets. Let's go to the next book. The next book is called 10x rule by Grant Cardone. This is actually the next one I'm, I'm just putting it down here, but I don't have the physical copy of 10x rule handy I think I have it in my other computer bag now. I love the book called 10x rule It's one of those environmental changing kind of things so the cool thing about that, which just actually recently clicked for me a couple days ago, is omnipresence. So inside of like my uh, my business, right, my, my core business, a lot of it um, is to put messages out to the market, show them I can do their accounting or I can like coach them and mentor them into like starting a business. So I have like a, a YouTube channel has like has like 700 videos on it. Um, it. It does really, really well every single year. And then I have like a LinkedIn, a Facebook, I have a Facebook group, I have like um, I'm a, a new Instagram profile I created like recently because I wasn't on Instagram very much. But having content and being able to share content just over and over and over again to like get it out to as many people as possible, it's just mind blowing the results you get from that because people actually want to work with you and you don't have to do as much work, right? A lot of times what happens is like most people have like a business, maybe they're like a, a financial advisor or maybe they're like a... Um, um, an insurance salesman or maybe they're just some kind, some kind of salesman right and they're cold calling people or they have to go to like networking events and like sell people on like their their service or whatever but when you actually have good content people actually come to you and it makes it so much easier to do it because you don't have to like sell very hard you don't have to do any kind of like objection handling they just want to work with you and it's just like oh my gosh I, I never knew that it was this easy to really like grow your business and it just gets easier and easier and easier and easier and you don't have to invest a lot of money like advertising or anything, right? Because the people already like you and they're just naturally finding your content on the internet. And it's, it's just, it's crazy. I, I think in later videos, I'll probably like break down like deeper, like what I learned from that book. But it was another one where it's like just like a couple of principles inside of there that really helped me understand, oh, wow. This is kind of how the world works of business. This is what I can do. This is what I should be thinking. Like this is how a really high level person kind of thinks and really just kind of go from there. So I really like that book. Another book that I really liked is this book called Sell or Be Sold by another one by Grant Cardone. If you haven't noticed, I really like Grant Cardone. 
Um, I liked him a lot more in, in past years. Now, now he's kind of like going more on like the real estate kind of like um, syndication um, zone. So he's not doing as much like marketing related videos as what it used to be. Um, and kind of as I get a bit older and like you know just my my goals and my stuff kind of shift. It's not as attractive as what it once was. But Seller Be Sold. This is one of his older books. Okay, this has so many rabbit ears inside of these pages. I have like old Barnes and Noble's receipts. <laughs> It's not his book because I have just gone through this like some of these receipts are like if you can see it some of these receipts are brown and dingy Because of like how long ago so this this book was actually bought three years ago. It says 6 18 2020 okay, this is after me like actually going through this thing for years, okay, and it was it's crazy man crazy but like it has like different things like um Wow like different things we're talking about like, okay, what are some things you need to change in your sales process? How to actually go and get um, sales? How to go and um, really move your business forward? What are different like sales things? How to manage a calendar? Okay, that, that was super important. How to manage your emotional state? What is important? How to think about the economy, especially like, like as we kind of go into like a recessionary period, how to really think about the economy is so critical. Um, and this really kind of gives you a really un good understanding, especially because like when you pair it with that Russell Brunson book, it actually talks about how to create your own like ecosystem, regardless of what economic systems are kind of going on. So for example, the Russell Brunson talks about like building an audience. And this thing talks about also building an audience, but how to think about an audience, how to think about your sales in relation to your marketing. So you're creating like this kind of goodwill inside of the market so that no matter if, if like people are losing their job, whatever, people trust you and they still want to do business with you, even in uncertain times. So you're not really affected by the market conditions that everyone else are so for example in 2020 a lot of people um kind of struggled you know due to the events that kind of conspire i can't really say what the event is because you can get like demonetized or something can happen to your youtube video if you say certain phrases around you know that that year um but i think a lot of people know what happened in 2020 <laughs> so um that was actually a really good year in business for me, right? Because both on the on the accounting side, I generally choose to work with businesses that generally do better inside of like economic downturns. Like for example, in my bookkeeping business, we work with a lot of like real estate investors. Um, we work we work with a lot of like construction. Um, we also work with e-commerce kind of businesses, right? So e-commerce does really well when people can't leave their house. Real estate investors do really well when there's like economic downturn because now there's investors that are like growing and like getting new, it's just, it's just more consistent, right? Construction is one of those ones that's kind of, it can be a little bit affected by the, um, by the economic states, but we're always building stuff. We're always like getting new things kind of put up in new construction, especially in the area I live in. So it's very, very consistent over time. Um, same thing with my coaching business, right? Most more people want to start a business when they weren't able to leave their house or they had more free time. So really learning how to like navigate that, how to think about like different time periods and like how to think when, when everyone else is getting fearful, um, like how to grow really, really strong. That's been a really good kind of like lesson I've learned along the way inside of this journey. Um, from like reading this book and then living out, you know, it's like, it's like you read the book then you kind of live like X amount of time and you look back and you're like kind of reminded of the principles of all the stuff that you kind of learned or lived through. Um, the next book that I'm going to talk about is the, it's the Millionaire Booklet by Grant Cardone. It's a very small one. Now, the cool thing about that book was it, it, it has like a very specific page, a very specific chapter where it talks about, um, it talks about... What is that called? The different ways to make a million dollars, like a bunch of different calculations of how to make a million dollars. And that was just kind of interesting to me because I never really thought about doing the math like that. But it's like any time that you want to hit a goal, if you can reverse engineer how much do you need of whatever product or price point you're selling in order to go reach the goal, it makes it a lot easier to attain it because now you can visualize it, you can see it, you can achieve it. They say if you can, what is it, is if you can, if you can conceive it, you can achieve, I don't know, I don't know the rhyme you phrase, but you know, something along those lines, right? As long as I can see something, I can plan it out, I can I can really accurately get to my goal a lot faster. That's really kind of a skill set I've also developed. Um, and I, I think the Millionaire Booklet actually did help me develop that skill set over time because I used to be really bad at making projections for my business, right? Because I used to have like, I, like like when I was a lot younger, I, I did like like e-commerce, like eBay drop shipping. I tried like Amazon FBA. I tried like website, like I tried all these different businesses, right? And I would always like say, I want to go do X, Y, Z, but my plans would always be off and I just couldn't really hit projects. I couldn't hit numbers. I just, I was kind of like, like just, just like a leaf kind of blowing in the wind. Like I just couldn't really hit my goals, right? 
So really kind of implementing a lot of this stuff over time has caused me to like find a lot more success a lot, a lot more easily. Now, um, another thing about the Millionaire Booklet, it also talked about, it was very, it was very weird. Like I, I, I need to probably go back through and read a little bit more deeply, but it was, it was also something around like, he kind of told more of his story about how he like went from like, you know, a thousand dollars a month to like, you know, like to seven thousand dollars a month right and at that time when i was reading that book i was really struggling in business like it was like right around the time when i first started my, my accounting firm and like i was just like um i was like because like, like i, I kind of read the stuff on the internet like these like coaches or life coaches or whatever said there's this like imaginary wall that's above your income level so you can never grow past this level right it's like you have a set it's like a set point and i was like oh my gosh how can I get past the set point? Because maybe my set point is I have like a thousand, like I can only get to a thousand dollars a month or whatever. That's not gonna work because I need I need to leave my like I need to I need to leave my job at the time, right? But it was kind of like I had these like weird beliefs. So then when I got to see him say, okay, well he went from like a thousand to like seven thousand dollars when he was doing like car sales or whatever. Like maybe there's not this like limiting belief. Maybe it's just I'm not either doing enough work or I'm not doing X Y Z. And like I just kind of like, broke broke that kind of negative belief that was actually harming my my career. And that allowed me to kind of get to that next level. And e even now, just like a lot of the times what happens is like as you get to certain points in business, as I'm kind of seeing, it's like your mindset is really the thing that's going to either make or break your ability to get to that next level. So, for example, for me right now, we're kind of I'm trying to go to seven figures per year. Right. But the way that I kind of think in terms of business is not necessarily the, the way that's going to get me there. Like I was afraid to spend money in advertising. I was, a spray, I was afraid to like go wide. I was afraid to have like vir like a lot of virtual assistants. I was afraid to have like sales reps. Like so it just caused my business to stay like at a kind of comfortable kind of like zone. You know like like 500k for, for some people I mean that, that that's a lot of money. That is looking back and like the amount of money that, that hits your bank account is a lot of money. But it's like when I look forward to some of my friends or different people in masterminds with, it's not a lot of money, right? So it's kind of like a weird kind of zone because it's enough money for us to be very comfortable for the next like, you know, three, five, ten years, right? With the amount of savings that we have. Um, but but it's kind of like um, it's not at the point to where I'm like above money. I'm trying to get to the point to where I'm above money, to where I never think about money. So I can just, you know, get on a, get on a plane, maybe drop $5,000 on a plane ride over to London without ever even, like, thinking about it, right? I'm not quite to that point. Now, do I have a good amount of money in the bank? Yes. But am I to the point to where I can just drop $20,000 on a Rolex and not care about it? No. <laughs> you know, I, 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 think, I think it might be, again, it's a mindset thing. It's not necessarily like, like a... Um, uh, it might in a lot of cases it's not necessarily a monetary thing a lot of cases more of just like you know that that seems like a waste of money to me at least in this current stage come talk to me like in three years five years ten years <laughs> and we might see things different and i am getting better right because like for a long time i like i like hoarded all of my money just kept putting like in, in retirement accounts and i still have like a good amount of money in like retirement accounts and whatnot right um but i don't know it's kind of like like for me one thing i'm kind of working on continuously is that understand that things aren't just going to explode or they're just not going to like stop right i have a lot of like fears around stuff like that like like things are going to break down or i'm doing the wrong thing or it's not going to work or it's not going to put me in track for my financial goals but it's just kind of like for me i don't know if i have a good book about that but for me it's just kind of like remembering to relax be grateful for what i have think about where i've come you know, and think about where I'm going and kind of get back to center. That's really the thing that, that's really helped me out. Um, so I like the Millionaire Booklet for that reason. He also has a thing inside the back of the Millionaire Booklet, which says, keep this keep this book inside of like either your workspace or your pocket until you make a million dollars and give me a call. And I'm like, I've, kept, I've literally kept it inside of my bookshelf um, next to my bed for the last like four years since I've been reading it, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm almost there, man. I'm, I'm literally about a, a one year, if, if that, away from like, getting a million dollars in a single calendar year like getting a million dollars in one single calendar year uh so that's kind of I'm, I'm hunting that thing down man like you if, if you're watching this channel like you can watch it along the way so i'm super excited for you guys to kind of like see that growth and see that journey um along the way now it's not gonna be a straight line there might be you know some tears on this channel there might be some frustrations i want to let you guys see like the back doors like what it actually takes to be successful in business um but you know this is kind of this is kind of what it looks like in life so, boom. Okay, so that's a millionaire booklet. Woo! Getting a little tired, man. It's Sunday. Sunday, and I was I was out salsa dancing um, at this dance social 
I'm in two cities over last night, so it was very, very, very tiring. Um, next book, Think and Grow Rich. Okay, so I like this book. Um, I this is one of those books I read like in the audiobook a lot. Um, yeah, so I read the audiobook a lot for this one. Um, but I eventually got got a copy of it. Um, I actually have a I have a newer looking version of a copy of this too. I think this is the one that my dad gave me um, a number of years ago. I never I never actually gave it back to him. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so it's very interesting to kind of see this book. This is another one that's just like it was really like stories that kind of like helped me help me think about stuff. Um, it was this one really wasn't kind of like extremely amazing. The one thing that is really cool is actually chapter, it's like XV, was that 15? That might be 15, yeah, 15. So it's actually one, it's like, talks about the six basic fears. So the fear of poverty, the fear of criticism, the fear of bad health, the fear of loss of, a lo of love of someone, the fear of old age, and the fear of death. So it's very interesting. I think out of all of those fears, my biggest fears are the fear of poverty, the fear of bad health, the fear of loss of a love, so this is not a lot like losing someone. This is like like someone falling out of love with you. That one not really that that big of a deal to me because um, you know love love is a very interesting game, right? The next one is fear of old age. So I I've I've really overcame a lot of like the fears like of old age, the fears of death, the fear of criticism, um, the fear of losing love from someone. Okay, now the fear of death that that one's kind of a weird one. I don't think everyone truly kind of get over the fear of death, you know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's not necessarily that it's a fear that's gonna, that you're just gonna die, at least for me. It's more about like, um, it's kind of like, so it's so far in the future for me, or if it's not so far in the future for me, it's something I can't really control, so I just don't really think about it. Next one is fear of old age. I, I did a lot of volunteering, actually, at, at the um, senior citizen, um, um, senior citizen facilities, right? So I was around a lot of people. Right, especially as they were getting kind of older, and it's just like it's not that much different. And like just, just I spent a lot of time um, growing up, even even now with, with with my family, right? So I see them at like you know their older age, and it's just like oh, they really have been the same for like the last like 25, 30 years, right? So it's just like it's not really that big of a deal for me. If I maybe if I hadn't been around those kind of experiences, I would feel old, fear old age a lot more. Another reason why I think old age is is probably not that bad of a deal or fear for me is because of the fact that you know, I'm incrementally increasing year over year over year. So it's just like, I, I understand that, you know, things, my skill sets are to a certain point to where I'm never really having to worry about money again. Um, another one is a fear of poverty. So for me, the fear of poverty is not really, it's, 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 it's hard to explain. So it's not necessarily the fear that I'm going to go broke. It's more of a fear of like, what if I don't actually achieve some of the goals that I have in my life? And then like, what if like, I guess it is kind of, it's not a fear of poverty, it's a fear of struggling, right? I think that's really the thing, right? Like, what happens if, like, the inflation just quadruples or a million X's, right, or whatever, and, like, the money in the bank that I have just is not enough to, like, last, at least for me, for example, because I'm, I'm supporting, you know, different people in my life. What if it's not enough to last them through their, their years? Like, I can always recover. I can always go and, like, either um, start a new business. I can go and learn invest. I can go do so. I can go get a job selling something right really easily because i have really strong sales skills um and be able to really just go like that and just go and grow like that um yeah so really learning what those fears are and being aware of the stuff that's really 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 important too another one is actually the there's a chapter inside of it called persistence so how to really really take your own persistent inventory so for me i'm i i, I like to consider myself a very like um, self-aware, so I'm aware of my emotions, aware of my state, aware of how I, my body feels, aware of, like, the one thing I'm not really aware of is, like, if I get dehydrated, like, if I forget to, like, drink water, like, for example, I'm, I'm getting a little bit dehydrated, I can feel myself getting dehydrated, um, but I think really knowing yourself, that has been a very interesting kind of, like, thing inside of my book, because, like, as, I don't really think I'm that patient of a person, but every every person that, I've, that I talk to has seen me kind of like come up on my entrepreneurial journey, knows that even when I wasn't making a lot of money and I was like, you know, having to stay at my job and I was like trying to like figure this stuff out, even though it was very, very hard, I never really quit at the stuff. I can just like sit inside of something like being really bad and feeling a lot of pain, a lot of stress and a lot of like, like struggle a lot longer than, than I think what other people have. And it's not necessarily that, that, um, you know, I'm, I'm different. It's just more that I just like, I don't really care. I'll do the same thing as long as I know that the goal is kind of 
a goal that's more favorable than where I am now. I just do the work needed in order to do it as long as it takes, right? And that's not everyone is kind of cut from that same cloth, but it is something you can develop over time. And I did develop that as, re as a result of just doing different programs, different mentorship, different. Cool. So that is how to think and grow rich. Read yourself into a fortune. Next one is going to be fanatical prospecting, Jeb Blount. This is another one that's very similar to, um, to Grant Cardone. So paralysis from analysis is a really, import, a really important kind of thing inside of there. It's like, okay, so you have to be able to take massive, 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 massive action and an attack, right? The next thing is talking about what actually is prospecting. So prospecting is like, it's a form of selling where you're actually going and really either you can cold call, you can email, you can send people messages on social media and then get them interested in like your product or services. So nowadays, like I used to have to go and do that manually, right? Nowadays we use advertising to do that as well as I have like a team of virtual assistants that goes out and messages people, books them on calls with um, my salesperson and then is able to kind of like get new business going in. That's like something we've been kind of like building over the last like three to six months. I'm super excited to kind of like have that be built out even further. Um, it's actually really, really good. But the one cool thing is like, okay, so inside of this book, there's four objectives of prospecting. So the first object, the first part about this chapter I really liked is it talks about like what are the different um, primary outcomes from each prospecting kind of thing. So number one, the first objective is to set an appointment. Number two is to gather information and qualify. Number three is to close a sale. Number four is to build familiarity. Okay, so. It's very interesting in terms of the order of information and the order of importance. So setting the appointment is actually the top one. I used to think that was, okay, I want to close the sale, but it's not. It's because you need to focus on leading indicators, not lagging indicators. So a leading indicator is something that you have to do in order to ensure success. So if you do X number of like, um, for me, for example, consultation calls in my accounting firm, that means like how many business owners I talk to about, you know, my service and like if it's a good fit for us to work together. So as long as that number keeps increasing, I'm always gonna be able to make more money versus I'd only focus on closing a sale that I, I don't, I, you lose focus on like all the stuff that goes into it and it makes it very hard, right? So as long as you can set appointments and you can control the number of appointments that you're setting, you can always grow your income proportionally to the number of appointments that you're setting and how much better your sales skills are getting. Next um, priority is to gather information and qualify. So sometimes like someone's just not a good fit at the moment in time. So being able to actually identify that very early on before you waste a lot of energy on the person is something that's really, really, really critical. The third thing is how to close a sale. Okay, so that one's really good as well. Like, cause you know, you know, we need to, you know, do sales in order to actually make some, make some money. And the fourth one is to build familiarity. So if, if something else happens, maybe they're not ready, them just really understanding you and just knowing you and like who you are really makes things a lot easier over time because you have a good portion of percentage of like your, your business should come from people who have said no from you in the past or who said like they don't want to do business with you. So really understanding those principles is really, really cool. And again, I'm going to go into a deeper dive into all these different books on my on the channel and future videos. I'm um, just trying to like make sure that I can just, you know, lightly cover all of them. Man, there's some good stuff inside of these books, man. 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 <laughs> these are some good books, man. I, I forgot how good some of these books are. Next one is Russ. This is a mindset book. Um, I actually gave this to my brother, um, you know, because because he's really big inside of music. He really likes music. This is like a, a famous um, rapper who, um, who basically wrote a book. So it talks about manifesting, how to be delusional, um, how to really compete with yourself, um, don't really like you know take other thing others criticism too bad okay overcome fear um hard work beats talent just a lot of like different things like gratitude this is where i started doing a lot of like gratitude journaling like like really think being thankful for what i have understand that you are going to fail and you are going to fall over time so it's just really talking about like life but the thing i like most about this book is that it's, it's a very very like very easy to read kind of quick read that talks in very simple english that's the best thing i liked about it. that's why i gave it to my brother because it just it's such simple english that it makes it easier for you to read and you can actually internalize a lot of the principles um because you know sometimes like some books are very very like complicated they're hard to read and it just kind of discourages you from actually doing it. now that might not be every single person but for me at least it um it kind of um 
not every single person, but for me at least, it made it really, really easy. Um, trust. Interesting, it's weird. Oh. <laughs> so it's funny. So uh, he actually he actually crossed out all the cuss words inside of the book. <laughs> oh, it's interesting. Yeah, he cut he crossed he crossed out all the curse words inside of the book. Um, but yeah, it was just a very simple book to read. I love books that are very simple that just tell stories that are very easy. Um, because then you don't really have to think too hard. You can just kind of float in information, and then it just makes it easier for you to kind of live off of that. Um. I'm going to start wrapping up pretty soon. Next book is Whatever It Takes. So this is about the guy who started um, Blackstone. So it's really cool books. They, they talk a lot of stories about like what they had to go through in order to get the deals. And the one thing that I've learned from this book okay, is that thinking it takes the same amount of energy to close a small deal as it does to close a big deal. So you might as well focus on the big deals because you're gonna be rewarded a lot a lot more, okay? So it talks about leverage, right? So really focusing on leverage, 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 okay? Understand the opportunities you're going after are really going to determine your out your outcomes in life. And it's like, it's, it's actually like one reason why it's like um, I started the mentorship and the coaching business in addition to my accounting firm was because it allows me to be able to grow a lot faster and a lot farther without having to do as much like man work is what you do for like my accounting and bookkeeping business so it's just like a different way of thinking and also telling the story about like okay even though these guys are like really really major it's not like they started like super super far ahead right they did start you know a little bit further ahead than than some people did um like to be honest with you, like yeah they, they did they did have like a little bit of a head start but seeing that they were even struggling to get deals and struggling to get people to actually want to work with them that was actually a very interesting thing to do. I think they, they, they missed out on like the first, it was like 64 meetings um, to get investors. The people said no. So out of 64 people, um, zero of them said yes. And it was just like, oh my gosh. So even though they were moving forward and how far they've come, they still faced failure in the past. And that gave me actually like perspective when I was struggling that was like, oh, okay. So it's okay to struggle. It's okay for you to not get things right in the beginning but over time if you're doing the right things and you're thinking the right ways and you're implementing the right skills you're buying the right programs you're getting around different people it allows you to be able to move towards your goal a lot faster so it just kind of gave me a little more patience and kind of like staying power like like i talked about earlier like um some people say i'm a very patient person i don't think it's a that i'm a very patient person it's just i have better context into what is the outcome and how far away from success that i am that most people don't have and like for me i might be kind of delusional that i always think i'm right around the corner from the next big thing happening and i know that since i have time on my side where i all i do is my business i do salsa dancing i go out to cool restaurants i drive my my uh car uh, maybe in this in this video I'll, I'll tell you about like like why I bought the car I bought and uh, what the process was like for that the decision making process, but you know watch movies watch movies with either my girlfriend family um, I go out to the movie theater with my brother probably every like Thursday every Friday night just kind of depending on on our schedules, but I have so much time to just focus on this stuff man this stuff is just so it just gets life just gets easier and easier and easier as I get better and better and better and I do less and less and less and I make more and more and more and I have more free time to go spend with people I like because I love I learn how to kind of like spread out my time even better um, cool so that's what I got from that book the next thing is seven figure social selling so this is a cool book it has like a lot of templates you can use on social media it also talks about the, the story of how this guy became really good at sales and just kind of seeing like from his dad from him what it takes to be a really good salesperson the mindset the thought process um, of like really how to go and grow a business and how to grow a sales organization it's so much um better than what i expected it being i, I yeah i went on like a buying spree of just like a bunch of different business books over time um, it was like one Chris. I just bought like seven or eight different books. I, I just wanted to spend like a thousand or two thousand dollars on like books. Um, I don't know exactly. I think it was because um, I read. I was watching this YouTube video. Told me to like do that right in order to grow my business journey. Um, and I, it did actually help. Looking back at that, like it was just like buy as many books inside of like your um, inside of the niche, the, the thing that you're trying to learn as possible. And then over the span of like two three years, try and read every single book around it that's rated above like four four and a half stars. 
and I started doing that, it just made it so much easier for me to kind of grow um, really far. Another book I really liked, um, it was a book called Gym Launch Secrets by this guy named Alex Hermosi. So Alex Hermosi has, has a couple different books. I think he's releasing his third one soon or something. I don't know. But there he has $100 million leads or 100 mil, sorry, $100 million offers. And he also has the Gym Launch Secret book. I read the $100 million um, offers. It was a pretty good book. It had some really nice like concepts inside of it. Like um, how to increase... Um, your back end, how to think about what is value, how to really talk about your offer in a way that makes it really easy for you to kind of sell it and how to like what is important for someone in order to actually want to work with you. And just a lot of like little things you can do to increase like how much money you're making per client, which is really cool. Um and a lot of different examples like that. So I do like that book a lot and I did use a pretty good amount of like the information inside of it to kind of like add little things inside of my business, the way I talk about my business, how I structure the offer, how I make my videos to talk about value so people find the stuff more valuable especially um, for the mentorship program to make it so much easier like work right so it's just kind of cool to kind of see that but the second book that or the original book he had was the gym log secrets that one was cool because it talked about his story and what he had to go through in order to learn a lot of the skills that he had and it, again for me i like seeing books where like the person kind of struggles a little bit because generally i'm like you know in that kind of spot they are along the journey and i can put myself in there see what they're doing pull myself out to see why they're writing like that what do they do to succeed and what can i do to succeed as well and it makes it so much easier for me to grow my business long term so that's kind of why I like that book. It had a lot of like little things that he did that I actually implemented inside of my accounting firm that made it easier for me to grow my business um, a lot faster, make people more what's called sticky. That means they stick inside of your, your, your accounting service a lot longer and actually like working with you. It helped me increase my um, customer satisfaction across both businesses as well, like adding, adding touch points. Think about my business differently from like, um, you know, instead of me thinking I'm just like doing like a, a coaching or like some kind of like course, right? Instead it's like, no, we're actually building like, like, like touch points inside to make the person as successful as possible, as quickly as possible, and really like focusing on the results that the people are getting so they give us more referrals, they start telling their friends. I, even on my regular accounting channel, I have some of my students actually make videos for my channel, just sharing what they've learned from the stuff I've taught them inside of my mentorship program. So it's, that, was, that was one thing I just kind of learned from dealing with better quality clients and like how to actually get better quality clients, having a better um, experience, having to work with less clients, and just made everything a lot easier to kind of grow. Um, so that's why I like that book. I think there was one more book that I was going to talk about, but I think, I think that's good. And those are my favorite books. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Um, we're going to be making a lot more testimony or not testimony, a lot more of these videos on the channel. We're going to be breaking down different business books. I know that I didn't get to go into super, super detail for every single one of the books we talked about. I didn't want to make this video like three hours long. I know it's, it's, it's probably a 45 minute video. Um, I know the camera cut off at about like the 35 minute mark. So I had to restart, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something new. Um, can't wait to see you inside the next one. Check out the description. Um, over time, we're going to add more stuff inside of this channel so that you can like get tutorials on how to grow a business. If you have a business, um, we're going to talk about investing stuff like videos from my dad, like on his investing side, we're going to talk about different story things. So you can take away from my kind of struggles so that you can go in and avoid a lot of them and, um, you know, really go and reach your goals a lot faster than what it took for me to start reaching mine. So look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Take it easy. Thank you so much for watching so um, far into this video. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your attention. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.